Good evening. This is the Elliott Wave update for the NASDAQ 100 for Wednesday, January the 5th, 2022. Today, in my opinion, was a classic buy the rumor, sell the news type of day. If you remember back at the last Fed meeting during the press conference, the Fed chair had stated that during 2022, there would be several tapering or tightening of interest rates. And the market rallied over 300 points on that news. Today, the actual fact that that is what's going to happen came out and then NASDAQ dropped close to 500 points. Found it very interesting, but nonetheless, let's figure out where we are, what we can expect and what this all looks like now. As the market did kind of come down, it broke a level that I had stated and had given out as the no break line, and that was 15,827. So it did okay all the way down there, but once it broke that, that then negated this being a one, two, three, with this being a fourth wave. Now, that then produces a three wave rally up to that high, and so I've labeled that a B. So what the changes are and what they encompass now is that this still remains the high of intermediate wave three, and that is 16,768. Then we did an ABC down as wave A, minor wave A. Previously, I had labeled that as the possible completion point for the intermediate fourth wave. With this rally up, followed by the decline and the break of that, uh, level today, that has left three waves up. So it's now a B wave. So minor wave A gets shifted out to here. This is minor wave B. So we're in a minor C wave down to complete the minor, excuse me, intermediate fourth wave. So within this C wave, as difficult as this is, it is going to count as five waves down. It's not the prettiest, it's not the cleanest, but it does fit. So we have one, two, and then to, then actually yesterday, we started our wave three down. And so that also fits against what the market actually was doing. Because as you'll remember, as we started to break the uh, moving averages, the 20, the 50, we got more acceleration. We came down and touched the hourly 200 yesterday, and that held, and that gave us a decent rally. Then we kind of farted around a little bit, and then we kind of hung out right there. We hung around the uh, 200, and then pretty much on the opening today, we broke down below, and we got some solid acceleration. And then we got additional acceleration just before the Fed, and then once the Fed minutes did come out, it, it picked up and it picked up a lot of speed. And we started to break all of the support zones and then eventually uh, breaking you know, 15,827 and then still breaking down below and still. So this is a third wave. Now within that third wave, the best that I can count right now is one, two, and this may be three, but obviously since we're still dropping, I'm not sure that wave three is fully complete and the only way we're going to know is that we actually do get a three-wave rally up or we begin to rally back above 15,765 as we then can say that the third wave is likely complete. We got a fourth wave and then a fifth wave down. That fifth wave down still is now expected to break below 15,492. And that's going to be quite the drop when we were talking up here that we needed to break 16,659. Now we're talking about 15,492. That's quite a lot of points. That's, that's, that's a lot to kind of take in and to, and to factor in. But it does exist. And the fact that it's a intermediate degree fourth wave allows for these bigger moves. So it's gonna feel as it did today, it felt almost crash-like, but then again, it didn't move at that speed. So it kind of just walked its way down, walked its way back up, walked its way down a little bit more, 
and et cetera, et cetera. Because it took a while actually for the Dow to decide that it wanted to go down. And it held and it held and it held. And the S&P was catching on and starting to slide and starting to go a little bit with some speed and eventually ending up down, I think it was 67 or so or 70 points. And the Dow ended up down almost 400. But that all happened within that last hour and a half of trade. So it was a lot of activity in the broader market of just selling versus that same activity hitting the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ did get a fair amount of selling, of course, because it dropped it down, but the intensity picked up in the broader market versus the, uh, the NASDAQ individually. Now, what we can expect for tomorrow. I do believe that we still need a little bit of a rally. So we still need a fourth wave rally and just to lay potential, and I'll do it from what exists right now. So, uh, yep, that's the correct one. So let's go from the top of two. Down, what happened? I went away. Can you do that? Come on, guys. There we go. And down to that bottom, which is 5710. And it's going to be off. So let me just make that adjustment because that's going to be off too much. Come on. Come on. Edit those properties. Uh, my computer is actually very, very slow. Yeah, I apologize for all of that. 571025. 71025. Yes, it's over five points. Let's get that straightened out. Make this as accurate as we can. So what this does let us in on is that if a fourth wave can most commonly go to 0.382, guess what? That's all the way back up at 16,032. 382, more realistic, 15,909. But anything underneath that still, as long as I count three waves up, if it comes in shallow as I, as a, as I expect, it's just going to signify there's a lot of sell pressure. There's still a lot of perceived sell pressure out there to yet come in. And so while we have those Fibonacci retracements in place does not mean that that's what's going to happen. They are just guides. They are just resistance levels for this way because we also can remove that. I can make it a lot tighter by bringing it down to this level. And if I do that, even then again, we're talking 15,916. Still over 100 points from where the market currently is sitting. So either way, we should get a fourth wave rally and it's gonna look like they're taking it all back. And it's gonna feel that way. So it's gonna be this push to jump back in as if we've made our bottom and now the race to go higher is back on. That's usually very consistent with what a fourth wave becomes. But then again, I'm looking for a, a turn and then for the market to continue to head lower. Like I said before, break below 15,492. And our next resistance under there is where wave C would be equal to 100% of wave A. And that comes in at 15,392. And then underneath that, while that 236 is for a, an upside move, what I do have underneath that is 15,092. And then 14,907, all in play. And still be labeled an intermediate fourth wave with an intermediate fifth wave rally to new all-time highs still out there waiting to happen. So again, even though I continue to present a picture, that ultimately I do expect the markets to continue to move higher, create additional all-time highs, and then finish those larger advances, and then turn and begin the much longer, longer term decline in a corrective phase. Now, as I've also mentioned, if we don't get that, the market's going to have to let us know. So right now, all of that potential, all of those possibilities still are valid, but the market will let us know. That doesn't prevent us from trading what's in front of us. That doesn't prevent us from, from realizing that we're going down 
and that we can trade and earn money. So again, always allow the market to tell you, even when we're using Elliott, the market's going to tell me what is coming next. So I'm going to give you both sides. If indeed this is going to come off and that's what all I'm going to get is a three wave decline, then maybe that C wave is complete. And if that's the case, then I will have to figure something out and realize that we're going to go up. But if, if it is going to go up and leave in three waves, it has to break back above 16,292. So in other words, to, to negate the five wave structure, the market has to come back up and break back above 16,292, which would suggest then that this can't be a fourth wave because we know wave four cannot overlap the price territory of wave one. That's where that is. So that's how we continue to just base things. And failure to do that leaves open our potential that we have a fourth wave rally and then a fifth wave down, that fifth wave will come down and hopefully break for 15,492, finish up down here, maybe as low as here. But if it doesn't, and again, this is a four hour chart. If it doesn't, and I go out to the daily chart, so just wanna update that one. The daily chart is looking, there we go, very negative. And I'll tell you why. See, we came in, we had closed back above the 20 yesterday. We came in today and pretty much mid-morning, we broke below the 20. Then as the day progressed, we both broke below the 50. When that 50 was broken at 15,986, boom, we got a lot of acceleration. We got over 200 points worth of acceleration to the downside. That is what I often refer to. So now, what can we expect now? Well, obviously we have that continued support at 15,492, but we need to now factor in, here is where the daily 200 is at 14,909. 910, 909. That's where the 200 is right now. The break here does give us two days, basically, of negative action in the NASDAQ. Today being very negative. If this continues tomorrow, it's just actually continuing that, that momentum. And so while we can't basically say yay or nay, the market will let us know. And so if it breaks the daily 200, then we're more than likely all done with upside. And this high at 16,768 will stand as the all time high for the NASDAQ 100, at least throughout most of 2022 as we go through and correct all the years of advance that I've discussed Sunday and yesterday. So we still have some room and the market has a lot of proving to do, but again, we're going to allow it to do so. And that doesn't mean that we shouldn't trade. Now, I'm going to go back to the hourly chart because here we can we sit and we can see some of the inside. So we got one, two, and we got one, two, one, two, three, four, five of three, four, five of three. And then, so I'm thinking that 15,663 should likely be met probably overnight, unless they really just pick up the pace right now and start this fourth wave. Uh, before we get going. We saw now that they really, we were down about 47, we're now only down eight. Uh, the Dow is pushing higher. So, you know, again, here we are gonna start this back and forth and, and as traders move in and do what they think they need to do. 
So we have 15,663. If that finishes the third wave, then we begin that fourth wave. So we're still gonna get rallies and they're gonna be very tradable. But, but what we need to pay attention to is, is like what you're seeing. Is the pressure on the sell side or is the pressure on the buy side? If the pressure remains on the sell side, I'm not gonna be expecting much in a bounce higher. But the bounces will likely be tradable on the way because I'm going to need to see a three wave advance of A, B, C, A up, B down, C up. And once that's formed, then you're more likely gonna know whatever that wave four is, it's complete. And we can start looking for the next leg down. Then we can also add additional layers of retracements, excuse me, of extensions to show what we can expect in terms of a wave four. So a lot of things still left to be done. But again, maybe we get down to 15,663. We put in a nice rally. It looks like we're trying to start to rally a little bit here, pick up from that strong decline. We have the four moving average here at 15,843, the eights at 15,964, that might be it. Rally back to the four, rally back to the hourly eight. Those are both good markers to put in. And we know we have uh, Fibonacci resistance coming in right about those levels as well. So they're sitting very cleanly. And so I would continue to use them. But the market to really show that it's done and this is done and we're now going to go up and recoup the 500 we gave today, then they're gonna to have to really push and they're gonna go through this and they're gonna go through all these resistance levels and just start breaking higher and totally take back that move. This one, at least from today, take it back. Clean it up, take it back as a big bullish engulfing bar. And that's what I'd have to see on the daily, a big bullish engulfing bar, totally engulfing what happened today. Now, I don't think that's gonna happen, but let me say stranger things. So for tomorrow, I believe that the bounces will be a fourth wave, one or two we got going. And then the declines are gonna be a little bit stronger as we finish all of this C wave down. So right now we're looking for the third wave within three of C to complete. And then we get a four of C, then we get a five of C. <clears throat> it is in that fifth wave that I would expect that we're gonna come down below uh, 15,492. We've already looked at our support zones. We have 15,092 and then 14,907. Those are what I would expect to hold. Coming down lower than that, then we're running the risk on the daily chart of breaking that daily 200 moving average. That would be a big negative for the NASDAQ. And that's what I want to leave in to make sure that that gets in there. Because if it breaks, then you're going to start to do a lot more positioning. So I'm going to leave it right there. And trade smart, again, still use the moving averages, even on the very, very short term charts, short term meaning short time frames, a one minute, a two minute, and a five minute chart. They all are there. They're all still very much pointing sharply lower. But you can see on your one minute, you got the 20 rising, you got the 50 starting to move up as the market. You know, that looks like a pretty decent rally. You look on the hourly and it's about an eighth of an inch. But here it looks very decent. And it looks like an ABC, right? A, B, and a C. Two minute, yeah, not so bad. Five minute, still all green. So, but still use these moving averages. So when it starts to turn on your one minute and starts to break below the eight, you're gonna to wanna to get in. If it breaks below the 50, you're gonna to wanna to maybe hang on to that. Breaks below the 20, definitely. So that's what I mean by using your moving averages, keeping, keeping always in view. They're gonna guide your trades. And this on the way down, the four and the eight guided that trade all the way down all the way down to the close. So the real trick is holding on to it uh, because there are many points you're like, oh, I'm gonna take my profit. Oh, I'm gonna take my profit, but it's just trying to hold on to those trades. 
All right, so this is where I'm gonna leave it for right now. Keep an eye on the moving averages, trade smart, trade well, have a profitable day tomorrow. The next update will be on Thursday, January the 6th.